much. Welcome to That Betting Show. May 24, 2019. It is Memorial Day weekend. Your one-stop shop for all your sports betting needs. He's Teddy Sabrant. Give him a follow on Twitter at Teddy underscore covers. I'm Donnie Seymour at Right Side VP. Let's get right into it, Teddy. Yesterday, the Raptors surprise in Game 5. And how about those Minnesota Twins? The second time this year, Teddy. Eight home runs in a single ball game. Let's get right to the hot topics of the day. Kawhi and the Raptors, one win away from the finals. How about the way it started off yesterday, Teddy? Red hot Milwaukee in inferno atmosphere, an 18-point lead. But who's the team that closed the strongest? That was the Toronto Raptors. And how about Fred Van Vliet, who couldn't hit the broad side of a barn? Seven for nine from three. The Raptors, one game away, Teddy, from a finals appearance. How about that? Sure, and a shocking finals appearance, considering how the first two games of this series went. I didn't see last night coming, I'll tell you flat out. Um, Under an easy right side last night, we saw a bunch of sharp money come in on the under from the get-go as that total opened. And frankly, the total in this one, never in doubt. The only thing under better sweating was another overtime or double overtime of the way they lost uh, game three. Uh, But under a clear right side, the pace was slow. The defensive acumen for both squads was spot on throughout the course of the night. And, And in a lot of ways, Milwaukee took Toronto out of their game. They kept the Raptors from getting in the paint and getting easy looks. So what did Toronto do? They drained 18 <laughs> three-pointers, and that was the difference. And Kawhi and Van Vliet were the difference, no question about it. But they weren't the only difference. For, I mean, they both played great for Toronto. And, I mean, throughout the course of the game, Van Vliet, I mean, I can't count how many big threes he hit. And then Kawhi with all the plays down the stretch. But, in a sense, the, the Bucks might have choked this one away. You know, uh, Brogdon screws up in the last two minutes. Middleton screws up in the last two minutes. Uh, And game on the line at home, it was the Raptors who made the plays, not the Bucs down the stretch to steal that one. Not to mention Aaron Rodgers proving he was unable to chug a beer. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, that was part of the uh, nice side banter there going back and forth with Bakhtiari and Rodgers. And even Kristen Yelich got into the mood. But the one team that couldn't get back into the mood was the Bucks. Even they had that fast start, Teddy. Up a couple points there. I believe it was 10-point lead at the end of the first quarter. Up at halftime. You saw Toronto start to take the game away. But even yet, you see that home team surge at the end of the ball game. A deep three by Lopez, which ends up tying the ball game. You thought they would take the momentum from there. But big shot after big shot. And Kawhi Leonard, worth his weight in gold in the series, taking it back to game six and we talked about it yesterday Teddy Um, look I didn't see this coming here and neither did you thinking that maybe the Bucs would be able to close out in game six huge game coming back now the pressure although does shift back to Toronto now as a favorite when we haven't seen them play that role so far yet in the series Teddy no question and and when when we look at the line for game six we'll preview this game a little bit later in the show uh, in detail but when you look at the line for game six The betting markets certainly aren't viewing Milwaukee as a dead team yet. I'm going to read you some Giannis quotes in a few minutes. You might think the same thing. Teddy, say it with me here. It used to be a famous song. Me and you were old enough to remember this stuff. Ain't no stopping us now. The Marlins are on the move. Teddy, six in a row, all underdogs. The same type of MO used again yesterday. Their bats are silent. They just wait, lie in wait to get to that bullpen. They finally get the green. And how about a grand slam in the top of the ninth inning to put them over the top? Six straight winners, six straight underdog winners, going for seven straight today against a team in turmoil there, those Nationals. Just an interesting, interesting part. But with a long baseball season, Teddy, we get to see some of this stuff. Sure. And, you know, Miami, with their 10-30 and 30 start, was on pace to be as bad as the 1962 New York Mets, the worst team in MLB history. Well, there was the 1899 Cleveland Spiders who only won 20 games. But that's mm-hmm. a little bit before my time. All that being said, when a bad team comes to life, There's money to be made. Look at those underdog prices. Plus 190, plus 115, plus 180, plus 100, plus 103, plus 133. Oh, they're dogs again tonight in Washington. 0-8 in Richard's first starts. uh, In Richard's first eight starts, 2-0 his last two. Uh, Hey, when a bad team comes to life like Miami is doing, they're a one-way team for me. They'll cool off eventually. This hot streak won't go on indefinitely. But for the time being... The Marlins aren't on your ticket. Well, maybe you should rethink that ticket. 
Teddy Boyd was really good yesterday for Detroit, and you saw Richards come in, not that good of, you know, metrics, even advanced or current statistics that he had. They waited around, and you saw it coming. The bottom of the eighth inning, it's a one nothing game. A single by Miguel Cabrera drives in a run to make it 2 to nothing. The next play was a double play when he could have tacked on even more runs. But always, this is, what, you know, as a gambler, Teddy, you've seen it. I've seen it many times again. In the ninth inning, all I do in a close game is say, bring the closer in. Can we just get the first out? And, of course, it was an error that started that inning off. We've seen it so many times again. But, again, we'll see if that seven straight wins by the Marlins can actually get underway tonight in Washington. Let's talk a little bit of NFL football, Teddy. 2019 NFL team preview. Guess who it is? Those New York football giants last year. Uh, certainly not having a good season, but let's take a look at some odds this year and then rehash back. Cowboys, 60-1 to to win the 2019 championship, 28-1 to to win the NFC, and the Giants' 2019 team total, Teddy, 5.5. Tough division they're going to play in this year. Finished 5-11 and last year and a paltry 1-5 and in the division. Not much went right for him last year. Still sitting in limbo. Some thought they should have went the quarterback, end up going Saquon Barkley. Now you see they get the quarterback of the future this year. You have an aging, older you know, quarterback not playing at the level he used to play. How soon before we see Daniel Jones? Certainly going to creep into it. Also letting some big-name free agent. I shouldn't even say free agent. Big-name players on their club get away. Dave Gettleman, what are we doing here, Teddy, with those New York Giants? Well, when we start to look back at the Giants from last year, the number one thing that really stands out is how big an underachiever this team was. They outgained their opponents on a yards per play basis last year, 0.1 yards per play. They were 0.4 yards per play better when they ran the football than their opponents. Eli Manning's QB rating 92.4. wasn't as not good, but not a disaster. Opposing quarterbacks only 89.8, so the Giants had an edge in QB rating. They were plus two in turnovers last year. You look at all these stats and you say, how the hell did this team go 5-11? and 11? Real simple. They had eight losses by a touchdown or less, and they had a 1-7 and seven start where they lost a bunch of close games, and the rest of the season was garbage time. They also played a tougher-than-average schedule. The schedule eases a little bit this year, easier than it was uh, a season ago. Personnel-wise, however, and there are a lot of questions about, are the Giants going to try to put something for a final season for Eli, or is Daniel Jones going to win this job out of camp, and all of a sudden the Giants have a rookie QB? And nobody knows that right now. We do know that, uh, obviously, when you're losing a talent like OBJ, that you're going to, you know, uh, you know who is a, a unique talent at the NFL level, when you lose a guy like that, there is uh, plenty of room for others to, to step up. I'll just put it that way. But when it comes to skill position talent at the wide receiver position right now, you know, they bring in Golden Tate, who basically the same price or close to the price they were going to play for a, pay for OB, OBJ. They get an aging receiver who doesn't make plays the way that he did. Uh, you have QB controversy. On the offensive line, you know, you bring in a Kevin Zeitler. Uh, I thought that was a good move, potentially. Certainly Eli is not a guy or Daniel Jones, whoever wins the job or gets the job. We're not talking about the more mobile quarterbacks uh, of the world. You look at the draft, you know, pick up Dexter Lawrence, also in the first round at defensive tackle. They didn't need a defensive tackle. Uh, I like DeAndre Baker, the cornerback out of Georgia. They could certainly use some help in the secondary. Julian Love, the fourth round, right? Notre Dame might be a guy uh, to watch there as well. But the def- uh, draft after Jones, a lot of defensive playmakers from a defense that wasn't particularly good last year. Some of that was injury-related. I look at the Giants as a potential overachiever this year when it comes to season win totals. I'm only looking to bet the Giants over in a media circus that has every move that they made in the offseason being, oh, ridiculous. Oh, what are they doing? Get them and get them and get them and the Giants stink. They might be all right. Uh, I'm certainly not betting them under five and a half wins. Ted, I got a question for you on that five and a half wins. And we're taking a look, you know, because, you know, that whole draft mantra, sit behind a quarterback. And if you're not going to be a good football team, usually that guy's going to end up playing. You saw it last year with Cleveland. You see it a lot. Going into the season with five and a half wins, if the Giants, I don't even want to say get out hot, because we even saw back in the day with Kurt Warner and Eli Manning when he was a rookie. Eventually, that rookie's going to take over. Does that come into play when you're looking to bet the over figure in yourself, Teddy, that you think Eli's going to get the majority of the playing time, that they can hang around that 500 mark, which it makes it a legitimate prospect that Eli can, Eli can continue and maybe even finish the season? Or are you saying, you know what, I don't think there's much of a drop-off between Eli and the rookie coming in to get that five and a half wins? It's an interesting question, and it's not a question that I have a great answer for prior to training mm-hmm. camp. This is the kind of thing. The Giants are not a team I'm going to bet right now, uh, their win total. I want to hear the buzz. I'm going to watch Jones play. I'm going to watch Eli play. And after the first two or three uh, preseason games, we'll have an idea of what this team's actually going to look like. There's upside, but there's also downside 
if I'm not convinced that Jones will be come in uh, and lead the Giants to a successful season. I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't expect that if, if he wins SBR the job odds. out of camp. Yep. SBRodds.com, overnight line movers, Teddy. Talking about buzzes out of the New York Giants. How about the buzz from the few, maybe 10s, 20, 30 fans coming from the Marlins here? You can hear it all over Twitter, Teddy. It's exploding out there. The Marlins looking to get their seventh straight win and stay hot. They open up plus 137, dip down to around plus 125 at SBRodds.com. If we take a look at today, the total bumped up, Teddy, from 8.5 to 9. Lopez versus McGowan. McGowan doesn't have a lot of statistics in Major League Baseball. When we take a look at Pablo Lopez, 3.67 XFIP and a 291 expected weighted on base average are we in for seven straight teddy well i mean let's put it this way coming into the season these were two teams that were lined as disparately as they could be you know what a 30 35 win difference uh it was like a 30 win difference between the marlins uh, and the nets well right now there's what three three win uh, three loss difference between the two teams uh miami's not all that much worse than washington right now and obviously they're hot pablo lopez Two of his last three starts have been dominant. You know, he's only 23 years old. He threw seven shutout innings last time out. I'm not surprised uh, he's taking money right here, although he doesn't have a particularly good track record against the Nats, 0-1 with a 7.59 ERA in two career starts against Washington. But no surprise that a Nationals team that's now 12 games under 500 for the first time since 2010 is not attracting betting market support as a favorite today. Uh, Miami are past. For this better and for most of the betters that I've talked to uh, in early action uh, on Friday. Yeah, Teddy, last time I rode the Lopez train was versus the New York Mets, the team that I can never seem to figure out. And they needled him for, I think, eight runs in the first inning in that game. We'll see if he can bounce back in this game as well. Angels, talk about bounce backs. Let's see if the Angels can bounce back. Rain delays doesn't matter. Rain outs in Southern California doesn't matter. They got hammered versus the Twins, and they opened up as high as 175 today, but dip back into that 150s range here with a total of nine. It's going to be Smiley versus the youngster Canning on the mound today. Yeah, and it's a rare occurrence where team form is actually coming into play here. Because there's been a lot of Angels money in recent weeks. A lot of wise guy Angels money. And most of that money is lost <laughs> right now. Texas is playing their best bit ball of the year. You know, they won four in a row. Seven of their last eight. Uh, tied for second in the majors. 271 runs scored. They've averaged more than six and a half runs per game during this current stretch. Meanwhile, the Angels got swept by, swept by the Twins. Uh, 27 to 11 in a three-game set. So, uh, I'm not shocked at all to see... Some Texas money here, but Canning is a guy that the markets seem to like. He's coming off a dominant showing against Kansas City, allowing just three hits and one walk in his last outing. How about the Blue Jays getting a little bit of money, a little bit of action early here on Friday versus the Padres? Line opens up around 135 as a favorite for San Diego. Dips down to the teens, now showing about minus 115 here at SBRodds.com. Total of 8.5, Lucchese versus Thornton tonight. And, Teddy, I know you're going to get into this. You know, when taking a look at splits, there's some really big splits here with that San Diego pitcher. <laughs> yeah, sure. Luke jay has got a 2.83 ERA at Petco, and he's got an 8.1 ERA on the road. And it's pretty consistent. His home starts have been dynamite. His road starts have not. It's not like one bad start where you give up 10 runs in an inning and a third, <laughs> like you were just talking about uh, with the Mets uh, in a recent start, that, or with Lopez against the Mets in a recent start that wasn't uh, pretty. But Lucchese's road starts have clearly been weaker than his home starts. And, of course, uh, it's a Padres team. Isn't going to have Fernando Tatis in the lineup again today. Quote, he hasn't had a setback. This is Andy Green. He's improving, getting better. But until he starts playing in games, his return is obviously not imminent. Tatis, a potential big bet as a rookie for San Diego, missing from the lineup. Teddy Lip. Why don't we stay in Toronto here, Teddy? Hey, look, we can we can stay over, you know, an extra two nights here. Let's cheat on this weekend since we don't have a live show tomorrow. Let's get into it tonight. Watch what you bet on sportsbookreview.com's That Betting Show. Game six in Jurassic Park. The Raptors, how about this, Teddy? Rising was two, a little bit around on SBRodds.com, minus two this morning. Now shifting to two and a half, total of 213. Money line split plus 120, minus 140. 830 tomorrow night. We know the statistics. Raptors 47 to 50 against the number of the season. The Bucks 57 and 36. But hey. First two games of the game, first two games of this conference finals, easiness for the Bucs. The next three games, the Raptors took control, looking to close it out. Teddy, I'm excited for the game tomorrow night. Let's see if Kawhi steps up. I mean, how many games in the 30s can he get in one playoff run? Giannis has to show that he's the MVP of the NBA in order to shift this game back to game seven. What's going to take place tomorrow night, Teddy, in Toronto? Well, when we talk about what happened in game five, the two superstars, Giannis and Kawhi, Kawhi had the better game. 
the role players, particularly Van Vliet, you know, Van Vliet stepped up in a way that no one for Milwaukee did. That was the difference in the game. The Milwaukee uh, the Raptors are the better superstar, and the Raptors are the better role player, and that was the difference. So let's look at some quotes, because that's what we have on a Friday morning talking about tomorrow's game, is a whole bunch of quotes from last night's game. Giannis, we're not going to fold. We're the best team in the league. We're going to go in, give it everything we got. We can't fold. We're going to come back Milwaukee being pissed. That's a bet on quote. Nick Nurse, interesting quote, uh, talking about allowing what, what, what his team did to respond to that 2-0 deficit. Quote, this isn't the sexy answer, but from the first day of training camp, we've been saying we're going to stay level. A shitty preseason game is just going to get written off. A great win at Golden State, same thing. A terrible game in San Antonio, let's bounce back. And we've done it all year. We've kept it even keeled. Kawhi has helped that. Kyle has been so much less emotional and a great leader. Marcus Soule, even Serge Ibaka, these older guys. When things have gone shitty, it's not questioning, guys. It's let's figure it out. I think it was the same today. Kawhi Leonard, who's been a monster. You know, we're talking about a guy who has an NBA Finals MVP on his resume. All right. You know, a buzzer beating win, uh, a buzzer beater to win game seven. Uh, quote, I'm not afraid of the moment. This is what I work out for in the summer. I'm just trying to win. It's a matter of me being aggressive and don't shy away from anything. Now, Leonard was supposedly banged up, leg soreness. Didn't look like he had a whole lot of leg soreness uh, last night, uh, hitting the 30-point mark for the fourth time in the series. Also, a playoff career high with nine assists in that ball game. And look, you know, one last quote, you know, Budenholzer. It's first to four. We got to go to Toronto and get a game. I think the group will be ready. I wouldn't be shocked if Milwaukee wins this series, and I wouldn't be shocked if Toronto closes them out tomorrow night. This is one I'm going to sleep on <laughs> before I get involved with. Uh, you know, sometimes you got a strong opinion right away about a game six. It's an interesting matchup. I wouldn't be surprised if the Bucs beat them. But at the same time, no question, Toronto's been the better team in each of the last few games. I hear you on that one for sure. Atlanta, Teddy, fresh off an of extra innings win in San Francisco. Going to get some travel. But how about this line here? Miles Michael is in the Cardinals' favor by 155 in this game with a total of 10. So we're expecting some runs. And why not? Fulton Davis was a very good pitcher last year, Teddy. Seemingly can't get out of his own way this year at 5.81. XFIP with a 357 expected weighted on base average. So we are going to look at some runs. Braves come in 28 and 23 for the season, getting fat off of those San Francisco Giants over the past couple of games. 14 and 11 on the road. The Cardinals 25 and 24, disappointing on the season, but 15 and 10 at home. Michael is first Fulton here in St. Louis. Yeah, you don't love the fact that Atlanta on getaway day was forced to play extra innings in San Francisco and then travel afterwards. Um, that's definitely not in favor of the Braves in this game. You talk about Fulton Awitz. I mean, uh, Cardinals faced him last week. Eight runs, seven hits, three walks, and four and two-thirds. I'm telling you, he was pretty ugly <laughs> uh, in that ball game. Braves manager Brian Snitker, quote, if we get Fulty back to where he was, that's just going to make our club better. He's shown he can do it from the last start to this start. He's been through a whole lot. They did a lot of work. And uh, it's a good outing to build on. Fulton Awitz, there's still a lot of work to be done. I feel like we just broke up a pretty good outing with the mechanics. Just cleaning that up I've made all my pitches a little cleaner. He pitched better against the Brewers. Uh, all that being said, you know, Nicholas has lost his, lost his last couple of starts. Uh, ripped in his last outing against Texas. What, seven runs and one and a third? Quote, I think I was pulling off a little bit. Stuff that was supposed to be going away. I was yanking it middle. Stuff that was supposed to be in. I was yanking it off the plate. Just not a good game. No surprise here that this game's seen over money come in. Two starters that have potential, but both. The current form makes me think against these lineups. We could see runs in bunches once again tonight. We saw the Braves, as we say, get fat off of the San Francisco Giants. Let's see if the uh, D-backs can actually get back in the fold. I mean, it's certainly on a losing streak right now, but Robbie Ray's going to take the mound here versus Pomerantz. Giants again, Teddy. We've seen this a lot over the past couple days and even over the past couple weeks. The Giants at home taking on money, now sitting at a plus-110 total of seven. Going to take place tonight in Oracle Park. That's San Francisco, California. The Diamondbacks 25-25 and 25 on the season, 14-12 and 12 away. The Giants are 21-28 and 28 on the season, 10-15 and 15 at home. See what happens tonight out there on the West Coast. Yeah, uh, some of the money's coming because Ray's pitching on short rest. Or he's pitching a day ahead of schedule as Arizona's adjusting their rotation. You know, he's been one of the hottest pitchers in baseball. Uh, you know, they haven't lost in any, or he hasn't taken a loss in any of his last eight starts. Um, 
you know, three and one, 3.25 ERA. He dominated this Giants team. And of course, Pomerantz pretty much in the opposite current form, you know, 12 runs and just 10 and a third innings over his last three starts combined. But Pomerantz pitched well in Arizona last week. And Ray didn't last all that long in that ball game. All that being said, Pomerantz does not have a good track record against the D-backs, although some of that was Paul Goldschmidt D-backs. Uh, we had a real bad track record, record against him. You know, they're betting San Fran. I'm not betting San Fran, not with my money, but this isn't a great spot for Arizona in my mind. They've lost five in a row, not playing good ball, and they have their ace pitching a uh, day short. Easy pass for me. There's your triple header there for Watch What You Bet here on That Betting Show. Let's talk a little bit off the mic, Teddy, because we always like to talk about other people's money. And how about NBA writers making an impact, or should I say a dent, in some of these players' wallets? When we take a look at Clay uh, Thompson snubbed from any one of the first team, all three, or excuse me, all three first team NBA teams, it's going to cost him about $30 million. But the one that's really interesting now, Teddy, when you see, obviously, the NBA, you know, the big marketing package that they had came around last time, collective bargain agreement. These guys are reaping the benefits of it, of the Supermax contract. How about you? honest, Teddy, in line for about $50 million a year next year, five years, $247 million. And Kemba Walker, yes, I know Kemba Walker's a good player. Is he going to sink a franchise by throwing that anchor around their neck five years at two twenty one? First off, it's amazing that writers are determining how much they make. But secondarily, my goodness, why couldn't I have been taller with a jump shot, Teddy? Jeez. <laughs> well, next life, Donnie, next life you'll get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But so Clay Thompson, it cost Clay Thompson 30 million bucks not to be on this team. And I'm sitting there, Clay's like, there's not six guards better than me in the NBA. And you're looking and you're like, Kyrie, Kemba, <laughs> you know, uh, I don't know if you want you know, Curry, Lillard, Westbrook. Uh, is it Durant or Harden? One of those guys went in as a guard. But I'm like, I don't know that I could take any of those guys <laughs> uh, out of the list that put Clay Thompson in. I can't, you know, he's number seven on a list that goes six deep. And it sucks when that happens. $30 million sucks, but uh, I think Clay Thompson will be all right. I think he'll live no, through I it. Think uh, well, I think they'll be all right. Yeah. And also us as well, Teddy, for this weekend off. We're going to have a couple days off here Saturday, Sunday. So look forward to that Toronto game on Saturday night up there in Jurassic Park. Teddy and I will be back on Monday to talk about it all. Are we going to be talking Game 7 or are we going to talk about NBA Finals? We'll find out later on that betting show. Thank you for tuning in for May 24, 2019. Your one-stop shop for all your sports betting needs. Once again, he's Teddy Savranti. Give him a follow on Twitter at Teddy underscore covers. I'm Donnie Seymour at Right Side VP. And we'll be back at it on a holiday Monday here at sportsbookreview.com. <laughs> 